What did you do yesterday? Just think about it. I'm sure you can remember. You woke up, probably brushed your teeth, put on some clothes, and started working. Now, what did you do the day before yesterday? Again, probably woke up, brushed your teeth, put on some different clothes, and start working. What about the day before that? And 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 the day before that? Stop. Take a second. Breathe. Take a step back. What do you see? So today we shot that little sequence. Let me walk you through everything we did. The whole behind the scenes. Let's do it. Yo, yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a little at home cinematic short in lockdown. I hope you guys have been liking these sort of lockdown videos because it's really all I can do as I'm still not allowed to leave my house, unfortunately. I've done two so far. I did some photography ones and I thought I would bring my video skills into the mix and do a little cinematic short. Let me walk you through the steps and remember these steps you can use for any video. It's kind of like the whole how I shoot my video kind of video, but for today we are gonna be adding special details for people who are trying to shoot at home solo kind of videos. Okay, so it's perfect that we're already here at the computer because step number one is writing a script. Depending on what type of video you're shooting, if it's a music video or an actual short film, you're gonna need to add some sort of script or plan. When there's a script involved or there's actual lines of dialogue involved in the video, I like to go with the script first and then decide the locations after compared to when all that stuff's already done, like a music video, for example, you don't actually have to write the song. Then you can choose a location based on the music and the dialogue. So for First thing we're gonna do is gonna write a script. When I'm writing a script, I like to decide the message and the mood I wanna put before. I've already been thinking about this video for a while now and I wanna make it about not letting your past define you and always looking forward to the future, to the next opportunity. So I'm just gonna hop on a simple Google Docs here. You don't have to do any professional scripting. If you want, you can learn how to write a professional script. But for me, I just kinda write, you know, Jonathan says, and then the little, you know, the classic thing that they used to give you in drama class. So let's do it. Another tip is when you're writing the script, read it out loud because it'll always sound different in your head than when you're actually writing it. So it's a good thing to kind of practice it and see if it actually flows. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that. We don't wanna make it too long. I'm not sure if I exactly like the script, but uh, I just wanna show you guys how we're rolling for this one. But I think it could play out pretty well and be an unconventional ending to a video. I don't know how to explain it. You guys will figure it out in a second. Okay, so step number two is all about getting the locations chosen. I need light. We're gonna walk through the house and we're gonna decide on our locations. Pre-planning is gonna help flow of the workflow. Like I mentioned before, so one thing that really helps me when deciding my shots is kind of like envisioning the image in my head. So right now, for example, I haven't seen the final video, but I can just imagine what shot would work well with what. So I've had some visions of a close up eye shot, a get me getting out of bed shot, me walking through the hallway shot. All these shots are coming in my head and this kind of comes with not only practice, but also just figuring out what would relate to what. If it's a line that says, what do you see? It makes sense that it would be a close up of your eye, not even a close up, maybe it'd be just me opening my eyes like this. So that makes sense, you know what I mean? Um, so you kind of want to think about that, what will go good with what? And then it helps if you know the locations well already. For example, if you're shooting a music video and you need a warehouse and you've never actually seen the warehouse, it helps to go to the warehouse and vision it. For me, I have the advantage of being in my house and I've seen all these locations trillions of times so I know exactly what will work with what. That's the advantage of the lockdown right now for doing this kind of stuff. We're going on to the next step, which is once you've done the script, planned out your locations, the whole planning is done, it's time to start shooting. You want to shoot one location at a time and get all the shots for that location. You don't want to be going back and forth because then you have to reset up and all that stuff. So we're going to kind of go with the flow of location from my room all the way into the bathroom and then we're going to finish with the close-ups. Enough talking, let's do it. Switch over to the phone for the BTS cam, by the way. So sorry if the audio quality is not as good. 
Remember also to change your outfits and things like that to make sense with the shot. So I'm gonna get a little more bedtimey look right about now. Let's do it. Location one done, now we're doing location two. Remember to take multiple takes so you make sure you nailed the shot because there's really no way of knowing when you're all alone. The second location, we're now doing the third. As you can see, it doesn't actually take that long to do all this stuff. I've done pretty much this whole sequence in an hour. Obviously it takes practice, but if you do pre-plan, then you can just destroy all the different locations. So let's do this. Now I get to brush my teeth until I get this shot. Shot number four, two more shots to go. Let's wrap it up. Touching here on the problem of focus when you're alone, the best you can do is either turn on autofocus or put an object in your scene that you wanna focus on. Focus on that thing and that's where you're gonna be positioned so that means that the focus will work with the object and with yourself when you're positioned correctly in the scene. That's pretty much how I get around this little hiccup. So we're on the last part now. All we have to do is just get shots of my eyeball. I've done this before. I took some eyeball photos last week. They're up on my TikTok if you wanna check that out. Link below. But pretty much we just wanna get a bunch of shots of my eyes opening, closing, getting bigger, all that stuff so we can play with that in post and make a sick edit. Okay, so my room is a little bit messy as you can see behind me, but that's just what happens when you're shooting video. We're done shooting the video, it's time to shoot the audio portion. I usually shoot the audio portion after I edit the video, but for this video, I think having the audio will really help me time everything because different shots go with different audio pieces. I'm doing a voiceover for this video as it would be very hard for me to do on-scene dialogue, but if you are doing on-scene dialogue, then you can skip this part and start the editing since, since all your audio is already in the camera. My music and my sound effects, I just get off of <coughs> I just get off a public library like Epidemic Sound or Artlist that you can pay for and get unlimited free assets to use in your videos. But as for voiceover, I use this HN4 recorder. I have a video on my YouTube. The card is right here on how to get better voiceover videos. Check that out first if you wanna know how I do this whole voiceover thing. So I'm not gonna go through how I do the voiceover because I go through all of it in the video. We're gonna skip into the editing once I'm done the voiceover. 346 minutes later. We've got everything set up, so we're just gonna pretty much edit this. Let me walk you through a bit of my workflow and then I'm just gonna do a time lapse and then I'm gonna show you guys the final sequence one more time broken down with the actual layers so you can kind of see what is added and how complicated the sequence is. First, I'm gonna choose a good track because I like to have my music to help set a mood in the video. Also, this helps you edit to music and then I can edit the whole video and add the shots where needed. With the music, I'll also add the voice because I think the music and the voice are gonna be the most important. So I wanna make sure those line up and then I can fit in the shots where need be. I'm a lot better at editing the video than the audio. So I'm gonna play to my strengths. After that, I'm gonna add in sound effects to add ambience to the room and all that stuff to make the video more more attractive to the person's ears and also eyes. And then from there, I'll add a color grade and probably a couple more final little visual effects that can be done right at the end of the video. And that's pretty much gonna be my workflow. So let me do that, run through it. And then after this time lapse, we're gonna show you the final piece, enjoy. What did you do yesterday? Just think about it. I'm sure you can remember. You woke up, probably brushed your teeth, put on some clothes, and started working. Now, what did you do the day before yesterday? Again, probably woke up, brushed your teeth, put on some different clothes, and start working. What about the day before that? And 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 the day before that? Stop. Take a second. Breathe. 
Take a step back. What do you see? 